One question that people often ask me is how can I become a pro or a senior software engineer and how long will it take? And if I have to be honest, I don't think this is the right question to ask. I have been coding for over 15 years and to this day there is just so much stuff that I still don't know. And there isn't really a magical moment when you become a pro. Rather, you should have the right mindset and realize that programming is a long and winding journey. It can have ups and downs, but also be very rewarding and enjoyable. So in this video, I'm sharing 23 top tips that can help you become a better software developer. Okay, so let's get started. And tip number one is to always be learning. The tech industry is very volatile and things change all the time. There are so many technologies to learn and so many languages to choose from. This can be quite intimidating, but if you have the right mindset and you like learning new things, you can enjoy the journey without feeling overwhelmed. And of course, everyone learns differently. So find a method that works best for you and get good at it. Tip number two is to pick one language and stick to it. If you try to learn too many things at once, you are more likely to lose your motivation and give up. So forget about the endless stream of articles and people telling you that you need to learn this new language or that new library. Instead, pick just one that you are excited about, start with the basics and stick with it until you are comfortable with it. As you get started, it may be a good idea to read the documentation and follow some tutorials to get a basic grasp of the language. But after that, there's no better way to learn a language than to build something with it. And only after you have a good understanding of the fundamentals, consider learning a new language to broaden your skills. Tip number three is to build something. Maybe there's an app or a website that you wanted to build for a long time. Make this a side project. If you can, set aside some time to work on it every day. Maybe you'll feel that you're not accomplishing much on any given day, but Rome wasn't built in a day. After a few weeks or months, you'll see your product come into life. And this is extremely satisfying. Choose a project that challenges you, but is not too far above your skill level. And as you build your confidence, you can always go bigger and tackle more complex projects. In fact, you only improve when you keep challenging yourself, so keep building new and different things. Tip number four is to break out of tutorial hell. If you are just starting to learn, it's very easy to fall in a trap where you do tutorial after tutorial after tutorial. And guess what? Once you get a job, no one is going to hold your hand and there won't be a tutorial for every single task you need to get done. Try to break out of this cycle and figure things out on your own. By solving problems yourself, your learning will improve considerably and you'll have a more concrete understanding of how things work. Tip number five is to read the documentation. This is the single best way of breaking out of tutorial hell. And the good news is that documentation is often just one click away. And you can easily see the documentation for your language or libraries that you're using right from your IDE. And to be fair, not all documentation is created equal and some languages have it better than others. But knowing how to read it and use it means that you no longer have to rely on tutorials. Step number six is to learn how to debug. Coding is great, but it can also be a frustrating experience. It's hard to know upfront every scenario or state that your code can be in. Sometimes things don't work and you'll find yourself stuck for hours without making progress. So what can you do when that happens? If you're getting some errors on the console, make sure to read them carefully as they might contain the information you need in order to solve your problem. And also try to become familiar with the debugging tools in your code editor. Use print statements and breakpoints to step through your code and verify your assumptions. And try to learn more advanced debugging techniques as well. These can save you a lot of time. Tip number seven is to get good at Googling. This is an essential skill that programmers use all the time, even senior ones. So knowing how to find answers effectively can save you a lot of time. If you encounter an error, you can copy paste it into your favorite search engine and carefully review all the relevant answers. It may take you a bit of time to figure out how to do this effectively, but you'll get better at it over time. Tip number eight is to understand how the code actually works. We've all been there. We found some code on Stack Overflow and added it to our project, hoping it might work. Don't just stop there. Take the time to understand how the code actually works. Make sure that it works under all possible cases and adjust it to fit your project style and conventions. As a word of caution, code that you find on Stack Overflow and other forums gets quickly out of date. So when possible, refer to the official documentation instead. Tip number nine is to reach out if you need help. If you can't find the answer you need, don't let that discourage you. You can always post a new question on Stack Overflow. When you do this, choose a good title and try to give enough context so that others can help you. 
Also, find out if your specific language or framework has a Slack or a Discord channel and join it. You might just find that there is an entire community of developers that are willing to help as long as you're polite and ask nicely. Tip number 10 is to learn how to write tests. This will make you a better developer and force you to think about all possible edge cases in your code, not just the happy part. It will also teach you how to write testable code and learn about important concepts like dependency injection. When you choose which tests to write, ask yourself what will be the impact if this feature didn't work. Then prioritize writing tests by impact. So have good test coverage for business critical code and try to automate as many tests as possible. Tip number 11. Learn Git and how to use the terminal. No matter what area of programming you're in, you'll need at least some basic knowledge of Git and the command line, because you'll be using these tools day in and day out. Try to learn about the more advanced features of Git as well. This will be very helpful when you work on projects with multiple collaborators. Also, become familiar with continuous integration systems and how to set them up. Tip number 12 is to create value for your users and the business. The reason that you're coding is that you're trying to solve a real, tangible problem that your users or customers have. So always try to focus on the users and business needs and have the big picture in mind. That way you're more likely to add value to the product. One mistake that I often see other developers make is to get stuck on one problem and go deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole. That is not a very effective use of time. So the next time this happens to you, set a time limit. Once the time is up, stop and take a break. Maybe the solution will come to you later in the shower. Tip number 13 is about problem solving. And I think this may be my top tip on this list. Customers and companies will pay you to solve their problems and not to know the syntax or language X. The key to this is to break problems into smaller ones that are easier to solve. And to solve big problems, you need to think about the big picture, all the way from UX to system design. This is necessary if you want to design or build an entire product, and you'll need to gain at least some knowledge of UI and UX design, data structures and algorithms, design patterns and system architecture, networking and databases. Of course, if your role is more specialized, you can focus on one specific area, but in any case, you'll need to choose the right tools for the job. Problem solving is an abstract, broad skill that takes time to develop. My best advice here is to work on many different projects. As you do this, you start seeing what works and what doesn't and draw on your previous experience. And I think that Dan Abramov says it best on this tweet. The reason an experienced engineer moves so much faster than a beginner is because they opened most of the doors they encounter in code thousands of times before. They stop to think, but so much is done purely by recall. This is why you need to practice, practice, practice. Tip number 14 is to focus. To be good at coding, you need to focus and work without interruptions for a long enough amount of time. So when you're coding, try to avoid all distractions. That includes social media, emails, your cat, as well as Slack and other ways that your coworkers may reach you. Set specific times for this and make it clear when you are in the coding zone and others will respect that. Tip number 15, be organized and plan ahead. A famous quote by Benjamin Franklin says that if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Whether you're working on just one project or have many things at hand and you need to keep on top of them, try to be organized. One of my habits is to keep a daily to-do list of all the things that I plan to do. And I find it very satisfying to tick off all the tasks at the end of the day. And beyond that, I also have longer term goals and plans so that I can keep track of my progress and focus on what matters. To organize all my work, I use this tool called Notion, which has become my favorite productivity tool. And I'm not saying this to sponsor them, I just really like it. Tip number 16 is to learn how to read other people's code. Chances are that throughout your career, you spend more time reading code than writing it. So getting good at reading code will help you to understand many different code bases. And where can you do this? You can read the documentation and source code for libraries or frameworks that you already use. Also, check out some open source projects. There are entire lists of free open source projects on GitHub. Once you find a good project, check out the code and open it in your editor, and then try to run it and understand how it works. And if you work in a team, do code reviews. As you do this, try to think about how the code could be improved. Doing this will make you more aware about style and conventions so that you can improve the way you write your code. Your future self will thank you for this. Tip number 17 is to get involved in open source. 
By contributing to existing open source projects, you can improve your code reading skills and get valuable feedback on your own code. To get started, you can join the GitHub open source community, which contains a lot of useful resources. By writing open source code, you can stop reinventing the wheel and carry over your best code across projects. And if your project is useful enough, it can have a big impact. Doing this is also great for your CV. A good GitHub profile shows tangible proof of your skills and coding style and increases your chances of getting a job. On a personal note, thanks to my GitHub profile, I've been able to stand out in job interviews and negotiate great offers time and again. Tip number 18 is to stay up to date with articles, videos and courses. You don't need to read every single article and watch every YouTube video out there. And as I said before, you shouldn't be following tutorials only. Trying things out on your own is more important. But you should try to find the right resources to fast track your learning so that you don't have to figure out everything by yourself. Try to find a list of experts who regularly share quality content and subscribe to their feeds. This is a great way to stay up to date and learn about new things. Tip 19 is to learn basic design. You don't need to become a professional designer, but you should understand the basic principles of design and become familiar with at least one design tool. This is valuable so that you can make your own work look good, especially if potential employers or clients will see this. But it also expands your sphere of knowledge and helps you think about problems in terms of UX and not just code. Tip number 20 is to learn how to communicate. This one is super important. I don't think you can be a great developer if you can't communicate well. You should be able to explain things in plain English even if it's not your first language so that non-technical people in your team can understand you. Beyond that, always communicate clearly what you're working on, what problems you're facing and make sure you do what you say you'll do. If you work remotely, take 5 minutes every day to share your updates. I always do this and my clients really appreciate it. All this builds trust. Being reliable and trustworthy can be your single best asset and is absolutely critical if you are a freelancer. Tip number 21 is to do your best work. Your work is your brand. Your brand is what sets you apart. So always aim to deliver the best work you can. If you can impress the people you work with, they are more likely to recommend you when you're looking for a new job. And when you publish your own work, whether it's a GitHub project, your portfolio, an article or YouTube video, that is for everyone to see. So make it look great. Tip number 22 is to share your knowledge. When you learn something useful, blog about it. Explaining things in writing can improve your knowledge on a certain topic. Practice making your writing more clear and concise. This is a valuable skill in itself, especially if you work remotely. Keep writing and you'll build a trove of knowledge that you can share with others and come back to when you need. It will also boost your profile and CV and help you engage with your community. Finally, my last tip is to take care of yourself. Life is short and things can go wrong faster than you might think. So drink plenty of water, do exercise, eat and sleep well. Don't work too much. Look after yourself and others close to you. Okay, so this completes my list of top 23 tips. And we have covered a lot of stuff, so if this all feels a bit overwhelming, don't worry. Take things step by step. As long as you are learning and continuing to grow, then you are on the right track. And if you're still not sure where to start, you can check out this developer's roadmap website. This includes learning roadmaps for front-end, back-end developers and more. And each roadmap contains very detailed information about topics that you should be aware of. But like I said before, you don't need to learn all of this at once. By the way, if you want to learn about app development in Flutter using best practices, you are already in the right place. My channel contains a lot of videos about Flutter state management, architecture, building layouts, as well as the fundamentals of the Dart language. So if you want to fast track your Flutter learning, make sure to like and subscribe. And also you can check out my website at codewithandrea.com. This contains transcripts for most of my videos as well as articles, tips and Flutter courses that you can take if you want to learn with a more structured approach. So this has been 23 top tips that you can use to improve your coding skills and become a better software engineer. So let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with my tips or if you have any more that you want to share. Thank you very much for watching. If this video has helped you, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.